Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome back to another episode of Venom Vlog. And as you can see, we are in our new set here. And I wasn't going to do this and set this all up until after Christmas. Actually, I was going to wait till season five to kind of do this. Um, obviously, I've been wanting to upgrade my quality of my content for a while. And I know some people are like, hey, I like some of your episodes, you know, but maybe work on some of the lighting or do this or do that. And I love the feedback and I really do appreciate it. Um, but when I finally got some money from YouTube, actually, so I did get, you know, one or two payments before and then surprisingly got a, a recent payment. And I was like, well, let's reinvest all that back into the channel. I know one was like a $60 donation to go towards a PlayStation Plus membership so I can continue to play and stream online every week on my gaming channel. So that was uh, and, and play with other you know people and stuff. So uh, so that was very great because that was uh, Lonely Symbiote and our friend uh, Sean, Requiem Games. Um, so thank you both for the donation for $60. I did get that and I'm set up for a year of PlayStation Plus to hang out with you guys. Uh, but then also the, the rest of the money, which was like another 60, 70 bucks, I decided to reinvest into the channel. So I got a new webcam. I got a, uh, you know, I got a circle light. Uh, you know, actually I've had this one for a while, but I needed a new kind of adapter to it to plug it in. Um, you know, I wasn't paying attention. I thought it was just regular USB, but it was like a mini. So, um, so I got, you know, a, a something for that to change that out. And then obviously I bought the soundproof pads. I bought um, a new keyboard, a new mouse, a new, iP uh, a new uh, mouse pad that has Venom on it, uh, which is pretty cool. It was like six bucks. The mouse was six bucks. The keyboard was like eight bucks. Um, so I found, you know, just good deals on Amazon and everything like that. And luckily, because we're approaching Black Friday and everything, I, it worked out. You know, like a lot of things were on sale early. And so I was able to get a lot of stuff at really cheap uh, prices. But I wouldn't have been able to get it and set all this up without you guys. And the, the reason why I took the time to set all this up is because I uh, recently lost a friend of mine uh, whose name is Keith Pagan. He was a really awesome guy, very supportive of me, big champion of me, you know, wanting to me uh, wanting me to be a writer, pushing me to reach higher. He was definitely like a mentor in a lot of ways, but definitely a friend first and foremost. And I'll probably talk about on Seek and Destroy. We'll do an episode about Keith. Um, but he sent me to my first Comic-Con, flew me out to San Diego when I lived here in Orlando about 16 years ago or 17 years ago, maybe now even. So it's it, it was a long time ago and, and we've been friends and known each other for a long time. And I was hoping when I come back to Florida, I could reconnect with him. Um, but unfortunately, when I came back here, he was you know living up in New York already and uh, battling cancer and unfortunately lost that battle recently. So once that happened, I found out that news on Sunday night when I was uh, on the end of my second double shift in a row, and I was so tired, and I saw that, and I, um, it, it really you know, affected me, obviously, because he was a good person and a good friend. So I came home, and uh, that night I started working on the room. I couldn't sleep. Uh, you know, I was thinking about him, and so I started working on the room. Got like two hours of sleep, went to work at Harley Davidson, came home, and uh, and then just went right back to work on the room. And that's what I've been doing all day, you know, Monday night, uh, or Sunday night, Monday night, and uh, Tuesday morning. So uh, so yeah, it's uh, it's it's been it's been a bumpy week for me. So uh, so thank you for letting me you know express that and share that with you guys. And I know the reason you're here for a Venom vlog episode though is because we were going to talk about Last Remains today. Um, but I'm glad I got to show the new set off now, and, and you know you guys can see it early. You can kind of see the lighting setup we're going to have. Hopefully the quality is better. Uh, you know hopefully the audio sounds a little clearer. Um, you know with the the sound pads and stuff. So hopefully this works out. I say hopefully a lot, but it's just because I'm I, and I don't know. Like I I took a chance and bought some of this stuff without really knowing too much. I did some research, but I was like, yeah, hopefully everything just works out. Yeah, that's the thing. Um, it's 2020, and I got to say, I'm very lucky to not only have two jobs right now, um, you know, back when I had none, you guys remember I was making the show, and I had no job, and um, so it's, it's nice to climb up words um, towards the end of this year a little bit and uh, and and thanks to you just watching the channel and watching the show I was able to you know upgrade this uh, this setup we have so now we are officially on planet Clintar that's what I named this room I took my bed out of this room this is completely a sound studio now so I can record in here and I do have my door open right now so you might hear the AC normally you wouldn't hear that um, but it you know I, it's been hot in here because I've been working so much um, but now that the AC is working again and everything because I had some issues with that um, I, I'm letting Letting it run today so if you hear that you know I apologize um, so the reason you're here today uh, now five minutes later is last remains um, the reason why I talked a little bit about my personal life at the beginning of this because there's not a lot I have to say about last remains um, we're gonna just talk about maybe four or five of the issues uh, 51 point LR so if you remember Nick Spencer's writing the main Amazing Spider-Man book, but like he did with the Hunted storyline, we, we didn't cover it on the channel, but um, if you were out there reading it, he'll do this thing where it's like issue 17, and then he'll do 17.HU, 
and then issue 18 and then 18 point HU. And basically those point HU issues, or in this case, last remains, uh, point LR issues, those are events that happened in between the issues. So they, they are kind of essential in some ways um, because you get to see what certain characters are doing. Like we're gonna talk a little bit about Black Cat in this episode where she had a teaser moment and then one of the main issues, but then one of the, uh, the LR issues, she kind of fleshes out that story a little bit more where she has to steal something from Doctor Strange for Spider-Man, uh, which is pretty neat. So. We're going to talk a little bit about this, but I'm not going to dive too much into this. And honestly, some of the references in here were a little bit over my head. I mean, I love Spider-Man. I've read a lot of Spider-Man stuff. But uh, my memories of some of them, you know, for, for this, I was like, I feel like that could be something. Um, like the Hand of Fashanti, or I can't remember if that's exactly what it's called. But there's a couple things in here. I'm like, I feel like that's been touched on before in a comic, but I can't remember. Uh, of course, I remember Mr. E in Symbiote Spider-Man, which we'll do an episode on that coming up. But, uh, but of course I remember Mr. E, uh, like a shadow creature from space, but I couldn't remember some of the things in here. So I'm like, oh, well, uh, you know, selective memory, I guess. Um, but this story is actually, some of the LR issues are written by uh, Scott, uh, you know, obviously Nick Spencer, but also Michael Rosenberg, um, who has done, um, you know, some X-Men stuff. You know, Matthew has done, uh, did I say Matthew or Michael? Um, it's Matthew Rosenberg. And uh, Matthew has written some X-Men stuff that I kind of liked, and he's done a couple other little things uh, throughout, you know, the his time at Marvel. So he's kind of co-writing some of these LR issues with uh, Nick Spencer. And then you have Federico Vicentini, who is uh, doing the art and, uh, and is killing it. I mean, I'll I love this guy's art. Federico is awesome. Like, I love his style, and, and I love, you know, what he brings as far as panel layouts and action and stuff like that, and he's pretty dynamic, and I gotta say, the colorists on this book and the inkers, like, everyone really brings their A-games. I found myself really enjoying the LR issues. Um, so, uh, so in, in the first one, 51 LR, we're kind of getting the fallout of Norman Osborn he, and also the fallout of Spider-Man. Remember Spider-Man in the last issue? He was at Doctor Strange's place, and all of his friends showed up, like Miles, Spider Gwen, uh, Jessica Drew, um, you know uh, Carpenter, you know the, who's the new Madam Web. All of them kind of show up, and they're possessed now. They have some kind of demons possessing them, um, and they're after Spider Man. So we find out more in this one what those demons are. They're not exactly demons; they're sins. So when the sins of like Norman Osborn, for example, who's sitting here and he's remembering casting out Harry and being a horrible father to him. He's remembering the time he, he threw Gwen off the bridge and how she died. And then like also, you know, some of the other stuff that's been going on with him and Gwen. And it, he remembers how disgusting of a human being he is. And so he's opening up to Dr. Ashley Kafka and he's like, you need to help me. I, here's all my sins. I admit it. Like I admit all these things and they're terrible and I should die for these things, but not before we try to save my son, not before we try to save Harry and not before, um, you know, we try to help Spider-Man. Um, so he's working with Ashley Kafka and meanwhile, all of his sins, the stuff he did to Gwen, the stuff he did to Harry, the stuff he did to Peter, all those things, other people in the Marvel Universe and stuff when he was in, you know, Iron Patriot and stuff like that, all those sins are now grafted to Spider-Gwen. Uh, Spider-Gwen is now running around and it's not a demon kind of wrapped around her, but it's all of Norman Osborn's sins and she's, you know, uh, kind of taken over by them. Um, and so that's what these heroes that have been um, transformed or malformed, that's what they are. They're just covered in the sins of Spider-Man's enemies that were taken by Sin Eater and uh, they were transferred to Kindred, but then Kindred redirected them in this new form to, to you know, towards Spider-Man's friends. So, um, so whatever Spider-Man's got, you know, like whatever he did to piss Kindred off, uh, you know, Kindred is really out for, uh, to ruin Spider-Man here. Like, that's the one thing I was realizing here is that we're going to get into some stuff that I feel is like too edgy and like one of those like, ooh, I'm a writer and I'm going to do this really edgy thing. Like, there, there's a lot of that in here that I don't really like too much. So I don't know if Nick Spencer brought that to the table or Matthew Rosenberg. I'm going to guess Nick Spencer um, because Nick Spencer is also the guy who made Captain America like a Hydra agent or something, you know? And uh, so he seems to have, he seems to be that guy that has those ideas sometimes where he's like, let's just shake things up and do something really grotesque or something really wrong that people are going to hate us for. And he just seems to be that guy where he likes pressing that button. And uh, I don't think it really works when he does it. And we'll talk about more of that here in a second. But 
um, this issue ends with Mary Jane returning, because uh, as we know, she had her own miniseries or limited series. I think it was ongoing, uh, tended to be an ongoing, but I think it got canceled. I can't remember. But um, we're going to cover that next season. We're going to do like the women of the Sony universe of Marvel characters. And we're going to talk about Spider-Gwen. We're going to talk about Mary Jane, Gwen Stacy. We're just going to talk about um, Spider-Woman, all these characters and Silk who might get their own spinoffs or their own things. We're going to do like a whole week or two on uh, the women of the uh, SUMC uh, or as Sony Pictures. So Spunk, the women of Spunk which just sounds weird to say. Um, but at the end of this issue, Mary Jane does return from filming her movie in Hollywood, and now she's back in New York. So I did like that. I love Mary Jane. I like that Nick Spencer is trying to work her and Peter back to uh, a place where they might actually you know, be married again. Uh, that would be really great. I, I see no reason why Peter Parker can't mature and have nice things and, uh, and, you know, and marriages work. You know, that's the problem is once they got married before, a lot of writers didn't know how to write Mary Jane and they didn't know how to write a good marriage and they did a terrible job at it. And that's ultimately what led to them retconning that marriage is because they were like, oh, 15 years of not knowing what to do with this character. Let's break them up so we can actually do things and tell Mary Jane stories again. And although that worked and it was great for a while, as far as like you got to actually see more Mary Jane stuff and Aunt May stories and Peter stories, now it's at a point again where it's like, all right, it's been another 15 years since you did that almost. Let's get them back together. And I'm, I'm all for it. So in issue 51, Nick Spencer is, um, you know, back on his solo writer and Patrick Gleason is doing the artwork. And I'm actually really glad Patrick Gleason's over at Marvel because I love his DC stuff, uh, particularly the Green Lantern Corps stuff he did during uh, the Jeff Johns run. Uh, he was working with Pete Tomasi on Green Lantern Corps, um, but, you know, it was during the Jeff Johns era of Green Lantern and, uh, I loved his stuff there. So his stuff here is really great. There's really great scenes where like Spider-Man's in the um, Sanctum Sanctorum and the, the, you know, the big glass circle window is shattered and there's like this demon coming through. It's, it's really cool looking. Um, and then Peter and, uh, and, and Doctor Strange are having these heart to heart conversations where Peter's like, you know, trying to tell him what's going on. And, and, you know, I need something from you. Maybe you can help me. And that's when this like hand of Vashanti thing, I think it's called. Let me, let me zoom in here. Um, he says, you might recognize it. Yeah, it's the hand of Vashanti. So I did get that right. Sorry, I, I have a, sometimes I have to put up um, reminder images on my screen here while I'm doing these episodes because I film so many of them back to back. I don't want to confuse events from one book in another book because I did that in the past before. So I don't want to do that again. So I have a few images here. So, um, so yes, it's the hand of Vashanti. And Peter had, I think, used it one time before, way back when. Luckily, they reference uh, what issue it was. I think it was like something like 421, Amazing Spider-Man, something like that. Um, but they do reference it. So I'm like, okay, good. If I ever want to fresh my memory, I can go back and read that. But I didn't have time before I recorded this episode. So you guys let me know. This gives you an opportunity to tell me about the Hand of Ashanti and how Peter Parker used it uh, before, Spider-Man used it before. So anyway, um, you know, Peter used it. He's trying to get, you know, use it to... I guess give him an advantage over Kindred and see what the plan is, see what's going on. Um, but uh, Doctor Strange's like, yeah, it's not working. There's something blocking this. I don't know why. I need more time to, to look at it and figure it out. So he's like, so I'm going to have to send you away, Spider-Man. So Spider-Man does. He's kind of beaten up after battling his friends and stuff. And he ends up on Black Cat's porch. And he says, hey, um, you know, I need some help. And she's like, you know, of course, she makes a lame joke, like, look what the cat dragged in. Um, but he asks her to go steal the hand of Vashanti. So that way, uh, you know, he that Spider-Man has it again and he can actually use it uh, to figure out what Kindred's working on, what the plans are, how Mary Jane ties in all this, uh, where it's all going to end up and maybe give himself the edge. And he does be able to he's able to use that hand and see at least where Kindred is. And that leads him to um, where Kindred has brought all the dead bodies. So if you remember Kindred, this is the edgy thing that I don't like that's happened in the book. Um where Kindred has gone and dug up the dead bodies of Uncle Ben, uh, Gwen Stacy, Captain Stacy, I think Gene DeWolf, and a couple other people. And he's dug them all up and he's set them all at a dinner table with one seat empty at one end. And then obviously Kindred sitting on the other end and the empty seat is waiting for Spider-Man, a.k.a. Peter Parker, to show up. So Spider-Man does at the end of issue 51, uh, which then leads us into 51.LR, which again is by Spencer and Rosenberg. Um, and uh, Federico does the artwork and the art is great. Um, and, uh, and in this one, we get some Sin Eater stuff. So this is what I was really hoping for. I was thinking, oh, maybe they're going to go on a redemption arc with Sin Eater now that he's free of his sins and Stan Carter is, you know, able to, you know, freely operate uh, without the influence of Kindred, without the influence of the voices in his head or anything like that. 
I thought maybe he would actually try to do the right thing. Maybe there was a, a decent human in him that uh, is looking for redemption and does want to help um, because they, we've kind of seen that before with the character. So I thought maybe they're going to do that. And this is a redemption arc for Sin Eater. But then he like meets up with his old gang, like they say they found his body like, after he got sucked into the darkness or whatever. Um, but he his body ended up physically still in this world, and so uh, so they you know his minions found him and they're like, hey, you did it, you know we you, you saved everything or you didn't save everything, but you released the monsters you said, and now everyone's paying the price. Spider Man's getting attacked, you know New York has been taken over. Like this is great, thank you, boss. And he's like, no, like it wasn't supposed to be like this. It you know. He's like, uh, you know, it's, it's Kindred is like manipulating things and whatever. So I thought, oh, he's going to try to get these people together and they're going to go stand up against Kindred for for good, right? Like like do uh, for, for like good reasons and, you know, and, and take them down because they're good people uh, deep deep down inside. But uh, it turned out Sin Eater isn't like maybe uh, Sin Eater actually surprised me and is, is he still wants to take down Kindred and, and kind of you know, stop him in a way, but not for altruistic reasons. It seems like Sin Eater still thinks the sin is out there, and he's like, well, we got to annihilate the sin. And so he still seems like he's a little on edge and a little on the bad guy side, it seems. So we'll, I guess we'll see how that wraps up. But I was kind of hoping for more, um, but uh, but unfortunately not. So, so while that's happening, because it's a point LR issue, these are events that take place in between what Spider-Man is going through. So he's off, you know, talking to Kindred at the dinner table with all the dead bodies. And meanwhile, you have Sin Eater kind of, you know, regrouping with his group, uh, with his team um, and all those followers he had. And then you have Doctor Strange showing up on Black Cat's doorstep uh, or through her window, actually. And he's like, look, I know you stole something from me. Bring it back. And she's like, well, I don't know if I can, you know, like I, who knows if the one I have is the right one. You know, and she's kind of playing games with him. And he's like, I really don't like you. <laughs> and she's like, why? You think I'm bad luck or something? Like there's some fun banter there I really like. Because actually Doctor Strange and Black Hat are two characters that I've met a couple times in the comics, but not a ton. And I kind of like their interaction with each other because she's obviously very flirty and she's like, you know, and kind of jokey and, and at times and stuff and never really too serious at times. And uh, and then meanwhile, you have Doctor Strange, who is like stoic and he's, you know, the straight man uh, when it comes to like comedy. Like he, he's not the guy who's known for his sense of humor. And uh, I liked the two of them bantering. Actually, I thought that was really great scene by Nick Spencer. And then meanwhile, while that's happening, New York, like I said, uh, and, and Sin Eater said, like all the superheroes that have been taken over by the Sins, they are wiping out New York. Uh, not wiping it out like uh, fully, but they're attacking everybody and they're putting people in harm's way and they're you know, trying to kill people. And one of those people is Mary Jane. She's stuck on the bridge. Uh, I think coincidentally the same bridge uh, Gwen was thrown off of. But uh, she, yeah, I think it was actually. And so she's on the bridge in a cab car coming from the airport because she just got back to New York. And all these spider people are swinging around and they see her and they're like, oh, we know who that is. Let's go kill her. And of all people to show up to save her, it's Norman Osborn. Uh, Norman Osborn, who has been working with Ashley Kafka, is like, no, we got to get out there. We got to save people. He's like, I, my sins have been maybe taken away, but I'm still strong, I guess. Like the, the goblin formula is still in me, but uh, but I'm so I can help. So he goes out and rips the car door off and rips the roof off of the car uh, when it gets attacked uh, because it gets crunched in and, and Mary Jane can't get out. And Norman saves her. And, I, and she's like, she can't believe it either. And I'm like, wow, that's a great moment. Like that I didn't expect. I was thinking Sin Eater was going to have these kind of moments. Instead, they're all given over to Norman Osborn. And Sin Eater himself, he's, you know, he's like, no, he's like, there is someone out there that we can use. And I can maybe still, hopefully still have the ability to absorb powers. There's someone out there we can use to take down Kindred. And he goes, and that's Moreland. So if you, uh, so again, these are all characters, some of them that were tied into and leading up to the events of like, you know, One More Day and Brand New Day and then Moreland and stuff that came, I think he came later with like the, the Spider-Verse stuff, you know, because he eats spiders or whatever, eats spider people. Um, and he has like a family of like spider vampires or whatever they are. Uh, so so Kindred now has a uh, Kindred, uh, uh, Sin Eater has a new mission, which is to find Moreland. Uh, and then we go to issue 52. So we talked about 52 uh, point LR, 51 point LR, 51. And now this is issue 52. And 52 is again by Nick Spencer and Patrick Gleason on the artwork. And again, Gene DeWolf, uh, uh, Mrs. Jameson, Flash Thompson, uh, you know, ben, Uncle Ben, all their dead bodies are all gathered at this dinner table. And Peter is like, you freaking monster. And that's, you know, he goes out, he punches Kindred immediately, um, you know, gets his little centipede bug, which I now keep on the chair 
Um, I bought this for Resident Evil reference, but now it's a works for Kindred reference. So, uh, so yeah, so he's fighting him. And then meanwhile, you also have like Spider Gwen, uh, you know, she takes off her mask and she reveals that she's possessed by the sins of Norman Osborn. And that's when, uh, you know, Peter's starting to learn exactly what's happening. And Kindred's like showing him like, look, this is what it is. Uh, and the hand of Ashanti kind of, you know, kind of showed him a little bit too. But now all those visions are coming into him and he's like, no, this can't be, this can't be. And meanwhile, straight up uh kindred as he's you know distracted spider-man with all those visions and stuff he picks spider-man up and uses the bugs they come out and they wrap around peter's neck and they hold him still and they snap his neck and that's how issue 52 ends uh sorry we did 50 lr 51 51 lr 52 and we're going to end the episode here on 52 lr um so 52 lr again by spencer and rosenberg because now we have peter broke his neck what's going to happen there we'll talk about in another episode uh, when we get to because we'll conclude last remains with issues 53 53 lr 54 54 lr and 55 so that's five comics we'll do that in another episode we're going to wrap this one up here with 52 lr and 52 lr is you know um again by nick spencer and Matt, uh, matthew rosenberg and then art by Federico, who does a great job here. And so this is dealing more with um, Black Cat and Doctor Strange coming to the bridge to help out. Norman Osborn's there. He saved Mary Jane. He brings her to safety, brings her to where Ashley Kafka is. And he's explaining to her, I'm not, I get it. I've done horrible things. This is not one of those times. And this is not a plan of mine, a scheme of mine. All my sins were taken away. And then Ashley Kafka's like, yes, as hard as it is to believe, it's true. And she's like, well, then why why me? Why do you want me here? And he goes, because I need you to help me with Harry. And he's like, what about Harry? Or she says, what about Harry? And he goes, Harry is kindred. And she's like, no way. I, met, I saw Harry before I went and filmed my movie. He's totally normal. And, and Norman Osborn says, it's it's not that simple. It's Harry, but it's not that simple. So I'm like, ah. Oh, what what is it like is is there actually some kind of demon thing that mephisto put into the resurrected harry is this harry from pre brand new day one more day and like the, the harry that died like is it his corpse reanimated and that's what's attacking them and there is a harry in place by mephisto that's kind of sitting there and does that mean if they destroy and defeat this kindred that harry goes away like I am like I'm so on edge now because I'm like hey, you know what probably the best thing they could have done with the reveal of kindred is make it Harry Osborn because I feel like it does actually open up for more stories that tie into the past of Spider-Man and kind of tie into the themes and the stories that Nick Spencer's building off of like One More Day and stuff like that which is a very taboo story for a lot of fans and myself included but yet you know he's jumping in feet first and he's doing a good job at it. So, um, yeah, I wasn't on board with the Kindred stuff at first because I thought it was dragged out so long that I was like, there's no way this is going to be a good reveal. And I think some people were guessing, oh, it's Harriet. But I, when I first heard that, I was like, it's too easy. I, I don't, And I don't see what the point of it being Harry is. But then once I thought, once it was revealed to be Harry, and I was like, but Harry's normal in the other book. So if this isn't like some dual identity thing with Harry, then what is it? And that opened my mind up to possibilities of other things that tie into Mephisto and, and you know all that stuff so I'm curious now like I'm just genuinely cur curious so I hope now I just hope that Nick Spencer sticks this landing uh, because the reveal I'm like okay that was pretty good and opens up my mind to possibilities but now it's like well is he going to reach any of those possibilities or create new ones and reach them and then you know stick the landing so I hope he does so at the end like I said Sin Eater at the end of this issue he's like all right let's Go out there. We got to find Moreland. Uh, we got to find these vampire people, and uh, and we got to you know uh, basically that will be our ticket to winning. And so uh, so that's where it ends there. And then the end shot is like all the people, all the heroes that are possessed. And I think Doctor Strange has now been possessed and is now one of them too. He's got sins on him as well. So uh, so yeah. So we'll pick up with issue fifty three in an upcoming episode. Either we'll do it this season or next season. We might wait till next season because um, I want to obviously get all the Flash Thompson stuff in. So we do have another Flash Thompson story from this book that we're going to talk about in the next episode. So make sure you stay subscribed so you don't miss out on that. Um, but that's it for me today. Let me know what you think of these last remains issues. 50 um, LR, 51, 51 LR, 52, and 52 LR. Five issues we talked about today. Let me know what your thoughts are, and then we'll do the last five issues once the story concludes. We'll talk about it later at that time. So like I said, it might be early next year um, till we get to it probably, because uh, and then we'll do King in Black, which is the next Venom book coming up. We'll probably start doing some of that next year as well. So again, let me know what you think in the comments below. We'll continue our conversation down there as always. Thanks so much for watching the show. Like, share, subscribe, all that fun stuff, and I'll see you in the future. Peace.